Kali Linux and Ubuntu on Windows. It's the craziest thing, check this out. They run like they're apps on the system. Bam, there's Kali. Hey look, it's Ubuntu. They're running like they're part of the system because they are. This magic is a Windows feature called WSL2, and when you enable it, boom, Windows and Linux just got married, giving us the easiest and coolest way to run Linux on our Windows system. But hold up, now we have something even crazier. It's called WSLG, or G, I wonder what that is, check it out. Now we can run the individual Linux apps and they're part of the Windows GUI. Isn't this crazy? So yeah, I mean, Windows and Linux, they're, they're married now. So again, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get Linux and Windows married on your system. Setting up WSL2 on Windows 10 and Windows 11 and WSLG. And it's only gonna take you about five minutes, so get your coffee ready, let's do this. Oh, and also shout out to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. We'll talk more about them later. Now first, what do you need to do this? This is the best part. You only need your Windows computer. That's it. Now if you're still rocking Windows XP, you're out. Because you do need Windows 10 or 11. That was one way to segue that. <laughs> for Windows 10, you'll need version 2004 or higher, or build 19041 or higher. And then Windows 11, you just need stinking Windows 11. It's all good. Now also, one important note here. You saw how cool WSLG was. This is only gonna be on Windows 11, which is not too crazy because you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free right now. But if you still wanna rock Windows 10, WSL2 will still work great. And also real quick to make sure that you have the correct Windows 10 version, here's how you check it. Go all the way down here to your search bar and type in WinVer, just like this, and hit enter. Bam, easy enough. You can tell from mine that I am good. I've got build 19044 with the minimum, minimum can't even say that, being 19041. And then one more thing you'll need, whether or not you have Windows 10 or Windows 11, you gotta make sure you have virtualization enabled in your BIOS. Now first, to enable virtualization for your computer, you have to get into your BIOS. But how do you do that? That's gonna vary. But most of the time this involves rebooting your computer and as it comes up, keep hitting that delete key rapidly. Delete is the most common key you're gonna hit to get into your BIOS. Now how to enable virtualization in your BIOS will vary based on what computer you have. But here's what you can kind of look for. On AMD systems, this is what it will look like. You'll wanna find your CPU settings and look for something called SVM. For Intel-based systems, you'll be looking for Intel Virtualization or Intel VT you'll want to enable that. And once you've enabled it, make sure you exit and save and reboot. And this, again, will vary based on what motherboard you have, what BIOS version you have, and what CPU you have. Oh, almost forgot, one last thing you'll need, and you need this for anything and everything in IT, coffee. Never chucked out coffee. So now, here we go. Time to set up WSL2 on Windows 10 and Windows 11. The good news, it's the same across the board, and it's only one command. Check this out, it's magic. The first thing we'll do is launch an elevated command prompt, which is fancy words for doing this right here. Go down to your Windows key on both Windows 10 and Windows 11 and search for CMD. You should see the command prompt app pop up and all you gotta do here is right click that and say run as administrator. Bam, elevated. And now time for our one command. Right here in our command prompt, we're gonna type in WSL space dash dash install. <laughs> and that's it. Hit enter and take a quick coffee break. The magic will happen on its own. And once yours is done, you should see something like this. The operation is successful. Good job, doctor. But we do need to reboot our system. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, real quick, pay attention to this. Here, I'm in Windows 11 and notice that it went ahead and downloaded and installed GUI app support. That's WSLG. And notice that is missing here on Windows 10. Sad face, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and reboot. Now, once you reboot and you come back into it, you may see it go ahead and continue the installation for Ubuntu because that's what it's gonna do by default. Don't worry, we'll install Kali here in a bit. Now, last thing you have to do here, just set up your username. So I'll do network chuck, put my password in twice, and bam, we are in. We have Ubuntu running like an app on our Windows computer, which is crazy. We can close it, <laughs> go over here and look for it. Ubuntu, where are you at? There you are, and launch it again. Now looking back at Windows 11, I wanna show you one cool thing real quick. Let's get some WSLG action going. Here in our command prompt, or rather our Ubuntu terminal, we're going to do sudo apt update to update our repositories. Just go ahead and enter on that. Enter your password again. Tiny little coffee break, just for a moment. This won't take long. And once that finishes, we'll install a Linux application. So let's do sudo apt install, and we'll install something called GIMP, G-I-M-P. It's like Photoshop for Linux. And then we'll do a space dash Y at the end of that and hit enter. This is gonna be so cool. Give it a, a little bit of time, more coffee, no worries. Okay, it's done. Now try this. Go to your uh, Windows key bar down there. Click the start button, is that what it's called? Yeah, and notice, do you see this? There is a recently added app. It's called GIMP. 
let's go ahead and launch it. <laughs> look at this. Isn't this crazy? This is clearly a Linux application. It has the look and feel, right? But I can move it around, minimize it, bring it back up like it's part of Windows. This is a Linux application, and that's so crazy. I can also install uh, gedit, a text editing, editing application in Linux, and then I can launch gedit right from my applications here. Text editor Ubuntu. How cool is that? Hey, real quick, it's time for a coffee break. And this coffee break and the entire video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. If you've watched enough of my videos, you know that surfing online can be kind of dangerous. When you're visiting your favorite website or your bank, some bad things could be happening that you're not even aware of. And it's possible that hackers can see all of the traffic that you're sending to these websites. This can happen to you anywhere, whether you're at home or even worse, like a coffee shop or uh, airport where you're using free public Wi-Fi. Dude, it's dangerous. That's why you wanna use a VPN. A VPN like private internet access will encrypt your traffic, hiding it from prying eyes. And honestly, it's not just hackers you have to worry about. What about your ISP, your internet service provider? They normally can see all your traffic, everything you're doing. So if you don't completely trust your ISP, because uh, <laughs> I don't, you probably want to turn on VPN so they can't see your traffic. And I don't care what device you're using, whether it's your computer or your phone, you gotta make sure you have a VPN installed like private internet access to encrypt your traffic. And private internet access can be installed on pretty much any device, including your browser. Check this out. Before I go out and visit networkchuck.coffee to buy some delicious coffee, networkchuck.coffee, I can go way up here to my little private internet access guy and bam, activate. Connecting and suddenly just like that I am encrypted. I'm protected and now I can go get some coffee Now sometimes when you're browsing with the VPN you'll hit websites that are like hey, uh, I'm gonna give you a captcha How do you spell captcha? Is that right? <laughs> I feel like it's right I don't know or maybe you're trying to watch HBO Max or Netflix and you get blocked because you're using that shared VPN IP address right now My IP address with uh, private internet access is this guy right here But there will be other private internet access customers using that IP address, but I got an option check this out I can get myself a dedicated IP all to myself. And now I've got a dedicated IP just for me. So check the link below privateinternetaccess.com forward slash network chuck. That's a mouthful. And you can get a three year plan plus four months free for only $1.98 per month. That's 83% off. Kind of crazy. And if you're not completely satisfied, you get a 30 day money back guarantee. So thanks again to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Now, coffee break over. Let's get back to it. Now let's get a bit nerdy and talk about how we can use WSL to install other Linux distributions. It's kind of cool. Watch this. So I'm going to close Ubuntu real quick and I'll once again launch my CMD by clicking on the Windows key and typing in CMD. No need to elevate this time. Just launch it and let's try our first command. We'll do WSL once more. So type in WSL, do a space and we'll do a dash dash list. This will tell you what you currently have installed and all we have right now is Ubuntu and it's our default Linux distro. Hit the up arrow to bring up that same command and we'll do a space after our list and do dash dash online. Hit enter here and now we have a list of what we can install, all the versions available. And one thing I'm excited about is the Kali Linux right here. Should we install it? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it right now. So here's the next command on how to install this. We'll type in WSL, no big surprise there. We'll do a space and then dash dash install space dash D for distribution, space, and then we'll specify which of these we want to install. Now for Kali, we could do Kali dash Linux. Now don't do it though, don't do it. <laughs> I'll explain why here in a second, but if you were to install another distribution, this is how you would do it. Now here's why you shouldn't do it for Kali Linux. For some reason, this version right here that WSL is pulling from is not the current version of Kali. And if we try to install this, we're gonna have some major issues. But there's a super easy workaround. It's kind of fun actually. So what we're gonna do is go to the Windows Store. We're gonna go shopping. So we'll get back down to our start bar, our start button, click on that. And we're gonna search for Windows Store. Go ahead and launch that app. And then up here in the search bar, we're just gonna search for Kali Linux. And there it is right there. Kali Linux in the Windows App Store. Who would have thought? So just click on that and let's go ahead and get that sucker. Click on get. This will be the latest version of Kali that will totally work. And by the way, this works for both Windows 10 and what I'm using now, Windows 11. Kali Linux running like a stinking app. What do you say we open it? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Click on it and it will continue the installation process. Mainly it's gonna ask us to set up a username and password like Ubuntu did. So quick coffee break and we'll wait on that to happen. Network Chuck, password in twice, and bam, Kali Linux right here in Windows. Kind of crazy. So now we have Kali installed and that's pretty stinking cool, but we need to do one more thing to make the gooiness happen. Now don't be weird, it's GUI, Graphical User Interface, come on. Now on both Windows 11 and Windows 10, we're going to install something called WinKex and Kali Linux. WinKex, WinDex, no, WinKex. This is gonna do two things for us. First, here in Windows 11, it's gonna make WSLG 
screen. It's gonna be awesome. And then over here in Windows 10 land, it's gonna give us some pretty awesome GUI action. I don't wanna spoil it, it's gonna be so cool. Anyways, let's install it real quick. It's gonna be one command, let's try it out. The command will be sudo apt install, and the app is called Kali dash win dash kex. And then we'll do a space dash y, and that's it, that's the command both in Windows 10 and Windows 11. Go ahead and hit enter and the party will start. Oh wait, need your pseudo password. Same password you used before, hit enter, and now the party's gonna start. Quick coffee break. And at some point during the installation, it's gonna ask you, hey, what language do you speak? English, and hit enter, you're good. And just keep waiting. Okay, mine is finished, and the first thing I want you to notice here in Windows 11 is click on your Windows key. Check this out. Notice there are a lot more apps going on because all of those Kali Linux apps that are built in, got added to this. If I click on all apps, scroll down a bit, I have a whole Kali Linux folder right here with everything I need. I'll launch a text editor and maybe OWASP zap and just like that, it's crazy. I've got Linux apps from Kali Linux running in Windows. It doesn't get better than that. Now, Windows 10 people, don't worry, I got your back. WinKex does some pretty crazy stuff, so switching back to Windows 10. Once WinKex is installed here in Kali, we're gonna launch this command or enter this command. So check this out, we'll do command kex, space, dash, dash, win, space, dash, s. Ready for this? I'm not sure you're ready, ready? We're gonna set a password for VNC. This is actually setting up a new password. Say no for this, that's fine. And then here comes the magic. Look at this, you have your entire Kali Linux desktop right here on Windows. Isn't that crazy? And to get out of there, we'll just hit F8 and say disconnect, but that's awesome. And real quick, one more thing. Getting back to WSLG, did I mention that you can run Linux apps that are games and the sound actually comes through and works? Check this out. I installed a game in Ubuntu, go find it. There it is, Hedge Wars. Look at that, isn't that crazy? So what do you think? I think this is probably the coolest way we can get people invested in Linux. You can just install Linux like an app on your Windows PC. And it's using only one simple command, WSL space dash dash install, and that's it. And then everyone can start playing with Linux. And then WSLG, what? Anyways, <laughs> let me know what you guys think below. Make sure you hack that YouTube algorithm today. Hit that like button, notification bell, comment, subscribe. We have to hack YouTube today, ethically, of course. And yeah, that's all I have. I will catch you guys next time.